good afternoon. Welcome to A Place in the Sun. Um, this is a seminar on Italy, a lovely country. We all agree on, on this panel. Um, I'm editor of Place in the Sun magazine. I hope you've picked up a copy. There's a big section on Italy in, in there, this, this issue. I'd like to introduce my panel, um, and Alessandro. Yes, hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Alessandro Gaglioni. I am an Italian uh, avvocato. I'm a dual qualified lawyer, I'm qualified here in this country, I'm an English solicitor, and I am also qualified in Italy. I've been living in this country for more than 17 years now, so maybe I've done the other way around, that's what that was probably uh, you are trying to do. We have an office in Rome, so we can advise people, English people, international people, buying their properties in Italy. And uh, our stand is just there at the corner, so if uh, is anything I can help with after the presentation, I will be more than happy to do so. Thank you. Dave? My name is Dave Benton. I'm the owner of uh, Vigna Verdi Estate Agents in, uh, in Abruzzo. I've lived in Italy now for 11 years. Uh, we've been helping foreign buyers buy and restore in, uh, in Abruzzo. The stand is this one here. We'll be happy to speak to you afterwards. Federico? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Federico Ranuzzi de Bianchi. I'm from Italy and I'm the representative of the main Italian Real Door Federation. We are estate agents. Our stand is right behind me. You feel free to visit us and you can get a very nice brochure we have prepared for this event, which is based uh, basically on listing and focus on territories which might be interesting for you because we have decided to let you discover uh, maybe regions or areas that are not so well known abroad. Thank you. But um, it's important to, to, to state that uh, estate agents work slightly differently in Italy, don't they? And uh, being um, licensed for a start. Do you want to explain why? Yes, thank you for the question. It's very important to underline that um, in Italy the process to become a, a professional estate agent is quite long and difficult. So. Um, my suggestion is to uh, choose uh, one of uh, the members that um, are members of our federation because they have followed a long path that um, implies two examination, written and oral. That means they are very skilled and trained, so they can provide a very good quality services, uh, which is of course important. Uh, we have more than 10,000 members spread out uh, in Italy, uh, so you can find FIAIP members everywhere. Yeah, I mean, the problem for British buyers is that not all, not all the agents speak English, isn't it? It's, it's a real mixture. That, that's true, we're working on it. <laughs> but um, we, have... we should work on our Italian as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But anyways, we have prepared uh, any agent that belongs to our federation can download uh, forms both in English and in, in, of course in Italian. So if you go to any agency, they can have ready for you the form tra already translated. So you feel, um, let's say, safe and, and uh, relaxed because you understand what you will sign maybe. Okay? Um, but you, you know, should you use a lawyer in Italy? Uh, okay, uh, this is a. Uh, thank you for the question again. Uh, actually, in order to be uh, uh, very precise, you don't need, we, we, lawyers, Italian lawyers, we don't do conveyancing basically. There is a big distinction between the two legal systems. In Italy, we use notaries. We are all members of the, of the legal professions, but lawyers, Italian lawyers, basically do what barristers do here. So we do litigation, we do contracts, but we don't do conveyancing. We, you, you will not expect from an, English, from an Italian lawyer what you would expect from an English solicitor. To get what you would expect from an English solicitor, in a sense, you have to instruct a notary. A notary is an independent professional. He works for both parties, basically stands in the middle. He's usually picked by the, chosen by the buyer, because in a property transaction, it's not, it's not a legal requirement, but this is usually what happens, that in a property transaction, uh, the buyer is supposed to be the weakest party, the Romans used to say caveat temptor, no? Bu buyer be aware. So, uh, and also we'll have to pay, usually pays, the notary's, uh, the notary's fees, the buyer. So yes, you can instruct a lawyer if you want, for example, but just for your 
uh, uh, comfort, let's say the services that we provide, we can do the conveyancing from here, from London. So we have an Italian notary working for, for us, so we don't have to travel to Italy, we can do all the documents in English and Italian, but this is an exception. The general rule is that you have to travel, you go to Italy, you instruct a notary since the since the very beginning of the transaction and the notary, who is also a public officer because works also for the government, will be happy and able to advise you even if you don't speak a word of Italian and you have no knowledge of the Italian legal system. So that my advice is instruct a notary, an Italian notary, from the very beginning of the transaction. Yeah, thank you. I thank Avvocato Gaglione. This is important to underline. In UK, for example, when you purchase a property, sometimes you don't even meet the seller. The buyer and the seller, they don't meet. They just do the transaction, the exchange of contract through their own solicitors. In Italy, you meet uh, when you sign the final transaction act, the contract. You meet the other part. There is the notary that takes care of both parts. He's a public officer. He's liable. So it's very important. It's a, a figure that is a, a warranty for all the people involved in the transaction. But we don't have to forget even the realtor has to verify the cadastral um, aspect, the technical aspect, before we arrive to the final uh, signature of the contract. So that's our duty, that's part of the job. If I could just add to that as well, just to say that when you're doing your research on the internet, you're going to hear things like notaries, geometers, and real estate agents, and after a while you're going to think, oh my God, all these people that I've got to put together to make one transaction. The vast majority of agents who deal with international buyers, such as yourselves, should already have a notary that they use often, they should have a geometry that they use often. So, yes, you can go out there and find all these people yourself, um, but it's usually good to speak to uh, the estate agent that you're dealing with and, and get their advice on that because it just makes the transaction run a lot smoother by using the people that they, they normally use. And a geometry is a sort of like a surveyor but not yeah. quite? So. Yes, yeah, it's like a, a geometry does quite a lot of um, the different different types of work in it. They, they can do deal with anything uh, such as uh, changing documents if somebody passes away in the family or um, they can prepare the contracts ready to go to a notary. Um, they can also get involved in restoration and uh, things like that. So a geometry is quite a handy person to get to know and they have great local knowledge of what you can and can't do with properties. Um, we personally have a geometry as part of our business and it's quite good when you're viewing properties and, and to, to ask the questions, can we do this, can we extend, can we add another bedroom, can we do... It is good to have the knowledge of a local geometer because from one region to another the laws change throughout throughout it. So what is um, the rules for one area you cannot automatically presume that that's the same in another. So a geometer is a good contact to, to have. And um, you, you, I know you put you summarise about the buying process in this, which is very useful. Um, when you put it, you put a deposit down on a property and you take it off the market, don't you, in Italy? Can you just explain very simply how the process is yeah, works? Uh, actually, very simply. No, simply. <laughs> hey, simply is the right word because the process, the, the buying process, is very, is very, is very simple. It's very straightforward and very and very safe, I would say. Of course, it's a different market. It's a different procedure. So. Everything that is different scares a little bit. But if you know the right people, if you use the right professional, I have to say because I'm qualified in both countries, and not because I'm wearing this uh, fancy Italian flag, I have to say that the Italian system is very uh, uh, straightforward and very simple. Yes, you can. I mean, the first thing you have to do, you have to put an offer down, basically. Uh, and I just want to talk from a legal point of view, what is the difference between the offer in England and in Italy, because it's very important and can have consequences. And then maybe Dave and Federico can go a little bit in more details on what happens to your deposit. But the offer, uh, the, 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 the big difference between the two countries is that when you, in Italy, when you uh, put on the table your offer and the offer is accepted in writing by, I mean, from the other party, the seller in this case, as soon as you are aware of the acceptance of the offer from the other side, that creates a legal binding obligation between buyer and seller. It's not the same like here. You all know that here you can be either gazamped by someone else or you can pull out without any, any obligation. This is completely different in Italy. So you must be aware that uh, you use the right estate the qualified professionals, estate agents, because they know they know how to protect you. There is a right, there is a wording that they use 
that we use that basically the offer is made subject to searches and uh, surveys and all the searches that professionals will make at the later stage in order that if there is an issue on the property after and is it covered after your offer is void and uh, your deposit usually a small amount of money that you pay like a few thousand euros that you pay when you uh, um, uh, present basically your offer to the seller via the estate uh, through the estate agent is returned uh, to you because I think that you don't even give the check to the seller you keep the, se the check yourself we, Maybe you we can do have things in a, in a slightly different way because sometimes it's difficult when people are coming out for a few days to view properties and, and you find something that you like and it is correct what, what Alessandro was saying that if an Italian is buying from another Italian they would go straight down the line of changing uh, Given, given a deposit uh, to, to lock each other in. But you coming over from the UK, you don't have any tax code numbers, you don't have a bank account. So really, you can't do a contract straight away. It's quite difficult to do that because you, you need time to organize these things. And uh, so usually our agency and possibly others who, who deal with international clients have a slightly different system but it is correct what Alessandro is saying, to, to hold a hand, to hold a property if you like, or to say this property must come off the market, I do not want to lose this property, then you do have to go down the contract stage. And there are quite a few different contracts that you can do, but it all, every, each contract um, must, must also include some sort of payment to the, to the owners. And then um, you need, um, I don't know whether you can answer this or you want to pass it on, you need uh, to, to buy a property, you just referred to what you need to get your ducks in order, you need a bank account, a, 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 num a, a fiscal number, Codice what do you need? Fiscal, yes, yes. How do you get these? Money, the Codice Fiscale, which is the tax number, it's easy to, it's easy to get, even if you are abroad you can apply for it. Where from? Uh, from Agenzia Entrate, which is the government website. Yeah, you need that even if you want to rent a contract and then register. So if you're just willing to to rent a, to lease a property, you need that. But it's it's pretty it's pretty fast procedure. Um, I thank you, Alessandro, for underlining that. Yeah, probably in Italy, it's even safer the process of buying because. Don't say that. Don't don't don't, don't miss too much. This is too much. <laughs> no. If you have a professional say, uh, uh, joking, uh, assisting joking. you, and uh, once you sign a document and it's signed by the seller, and you you know that the offer has been accepted, you are both binding. Okay? They cannot give you a call and say, you know, we accepted a higher offer. No. Other way, they're gonna lose uh, the deposit. Or give, I mean, they have to give you twice the deposit you have dropped. So that's important. It's more um, safer for, for both sides, I, I, I think. The main thing for me, just to, to say to everybody, again, when you're looking on the internet, you're gonna hear a hundred horror stories and one good story. What I can say is, and I don't know, hand on heart say this to you, that the vast majority of information you will see on certain websites on the internet is, is ina inaccurate. And it makes you sort of, it makes you not want to go to Italy and look for a property because it all seems too complicated. It's very easy to say, I've heard that uh, Italy is full of red tape. For me, I hear that so often. And I've been there 11 years now. I, I've seen, um, obviously, we've sold a, a number of properties. It's a very simple process. As long as you use the right people, it is so simple, it's so transparent. And it's a very personal thing because you get to meet the owners, the money, that you're buying the property with remains in your bank account until the till the last moment, until the notary has said everything is fine with this transaction, we can go ahead. The money is with you to, to the last part. So you're not handing over huge amounts of money in the hope that everything is going to be okay. It's not like that. And, and the, if you're using the right people, the process is, is very, very simple. I know yeah. I've seen a few, have been looking at a few houses in Italy, and the, the vendors have always want to, they want to meet you and to find out who you are. Yeah. They want to have coffee with well, you. you. Become it's friends a different with them. process, yeah. isn't it? I would say all of the, maybe people that don't live in the area that are selling properties local is different, but the vast majority of our clients become good friends with the owners and they get to know their families, and, and it's, it is a really. It's quite a nice experience. And, you. and is it true that if you put an offer in that, that's a bit too cheeky or low, it can be a bit insulting and you can it can backfire? Yes, it can. I mean, again, a good estate agent should price properties at the right amount. I do know of some estate agents will, that will value some property, a property that's maybe worth 100, they will, they will set, put it on their website for 150 and then a month later they'll have a sale. 
and all of a sudden it's 110 again. Unfortunately, this does happen, but usually a good agent will, if somebody wants 100,000, an agent, just like they do here, will maybe put 110 to then arrive to 100. If you suddenly go there and with, with the attitude of, Italians need money, I'll give them an offer of 50, then they will say, well, we'll keep it and arrivederci. Yeah, I, I, I think that it's important, uh, first of all, to choose the region, the area uh, you would like to, you're willing to, to buy or to consider uh, purchase. Uh, and then to take a look around, see the lifestyle, see the landscape and everything, and everything. Apply for the right professional, okay? And then with the right professional you get the proper service. As Dave was saying, it's not even um, a professional attitude, from my point of view, as well as UK. Uh, when you see a listing uh, on the market, uh, reduce of the 20, the, even the 30% after a month or two, that means the, the, the right price was not the price at the beginning. So the right professional put the um, listing on the market with the right value and they keep the value. Of course, there is room for negotiation. Negotiation means, I don't know, two, three, up to 5%, as well as it happens in any market. But a reduction uh, higher than that, I mean, it's not serious, so maybe it's, uh, it's not the right people to deal with. So it's better to, I think, take a look, see maybe what more agency in order to understand also the average price. Okay, not to be too impulsive, okay, which is important. Very good. Uh, I mean, choosing location, you alluded to all the different regions. I mean, air, for, for, for people coming from the UK, airports are so important, aren't they? And there are areas in the south that are less well served by frequent flights. So um, you do have to think about that. Yes, uh, we have many airports in Italy um, that have good connections with UK. Uh, we also have bullet trains we make a distance shorter, okay? So you can, um, for example, connect and from Milan to Rome in just two hours. There's direct uh, uh, train with no stops. So, or even Naples. Uh, so, let's say distances now with good transport uh, are getting shorter and time uh, for commuting, it's really easy. And you, you mentioned about a lot of wrong information on the internet, which is true, especially also about mortgages. Um, you know, people say you can get a mortgage in Italy, 80% you can borrow, but that's not necessarily true, is it? It is getting harder. We, we, we very rarely do mortgages to go, so most people come out either with the funds in place or they remortgage the properties here in the UK, which is the easiest way to do it. Um, Alessandro's got a view on, on, on mortgages and, and, and which banks to approach. It is possible, but usually it, it has to be habitable. And usually they will not lend less than 100,000 and the deposits are around about 20 to 25%. Yeah, but it's not uh, straightforward. I was in Milan this week and they were saying that it, they 50% 50, 50 is really typically what foreigners can rely on being bor can borrow. Yes, okay. yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. What do you think? Oh yes, no, I always want to, to, to add this little bit because I think that it might be a good idea for you to try also uh, the uh, London branches of the Italian banks. We have quite a few Italian banks here in London. Uh, it's Banca Intesa, we created the, the, the two or three major banks and they might be able to help you because they can check here your, uh, your credit records, your credit score. They might even want to have a, a security on your English property to give you funds in Italy to buy your Italian properties. So if you are stuck with an Italian bank, eh, maybe you can try the London branch of the same Italian bank and they might be able to help. Uh, just on the tax code, maybe a fast track for us that we live here in, in England, you can try the website of the Italian consulate. If you go on the website of the Italian consulate in London, there is a page if you want to apply for the tax code and you get it a little bit quicker than what you do through the, the, agent, the tax authorities in, in uh, website in Italy. So it, it, it is worth getting one of these tax codes. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean all of a sudden you've got to start paying taxes in Italy and the rest of it. But if you're serious about buying a property uh, in Italy, it doesn't hurt to go on there. It's free of charge, I believe it is. It's still free. No, no, it's free of charge. Yeah. Uh, and you receive your tax code. It just, it's just one step ahead. If not, we, we get them on behalf of our clients, but um, some agents don't do that. But it's easy, easy, to apply, easy to apply. And 
least then you've got one of those for when you do eventually find a property and you can open a bank account quickly and things like that. And how easy to get residency at the moment? Uh, the, the moment it's very, very straightforward where we are. Again, there may be different rules in different areas. Um, you know, we can typically sort out residency in, in, in less than a month usually. The, the, the rules are that obviously you must live in Italy for longer than you live anywhere else. And uh, usually what happens is when you apply to the local council for residency, they will then send a policeman to your property to make sure that you are actually living there. So you, you can't sort of become a resident of a pile of rocks in the middle of, a, you know, in the, middle of the countryside. You've got to have walls around you and it needs to be habitable. And they will send somebody out to check and uh, providing that's, that that you are living there, then residency is quite easy at the moment. Hopefully that won't change with the uh, dreaded B word that I won't talk about. Well, we have a very nice, you know, the Italians, they're, they're probably going to make things easy, aren't they? If, if possible. They love the British, we love the Italians. Of course, of course. Just some residents. And we just want to make a, a slightly difference between the tax residency and the legal residence, basically. If you don't tell anything to the Italian authorities, and you live there in Italy, and you keep your address here, but you live in Italy for more than, you're physically with your foot in Italy, and in Italy for more than 183 days per year, you will become, you will be deemed to be tax resident in Italy. Okay, so the tax authorities might want you to file your tax return in Italy. So it's important not to confuse the legal residence, which is basically the address that you have in Italy, and what David say, you go to the, to the council, you tell them, from now, from now on I live in this property here, from the tax residency, that is something that even if you say nothing to the authorities, you will be deemed to be resident for tax purposes in Italy if you physically are in the country for more than 183 days for each calendar year, which is absolutely more than 50% of the, of, the, of the tax year, basically. Yeah, and I think for wealthy people, there's a new flat tax rate regime in Italy that's in that's drawing lots of people into the country at the moment I've been seeing so yeah, they are changing the tax laws quite a lot uh, in Italy at the moment so uh, new things are coming along all the time and there is a new one I believe they're paying is it seven percent I think for five years uh, yeah. for, uh, that would be the maximum tax that you would pay for five years they're trying to encourage people obviously to come to Italy uh, these things are changing all the time with the new government so watch the space and uh, it's also important to make a separate will for your Italian property if you buy one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's definitely a good idea because the general principle is that your English will is valid, is fully valid and acceptable in Italy. So that's the general rule. So if you have a will here uh, that you've done with your English solicitor in English covering properties everywhere in the world, this will will be accepted and valid in Italy. But from practical reasons, we always advise to make an, another will, an Italian will, uh, covering only the Italian assets, your Italian properties, because this will will be in Italian, of course, or actually can be in English, but will be done under the Italian, I mean, under the Italian rules, so it will be more recognizable, and your, the, the life of your heirs will be much easier if they do the equivalent of the probate, the Italian probate, using an Italian will rather than an English will, because it would be much smoother. So my advice is, if you have an English will, you can amend the English will, saying that your English will will cover only the properties everywhere situated, but not in Italy, and then at the same time you do an Italian will, and that will cover the properties in Italy, so in, in Italy we say 100 year times, so when the worst will happen, your heirs, will have the life really much easier because they can go to the Italian notary, give him an Italian will and he will do and he will do the rest. It will be much easier. So yes, my advice is to make an Italian will. Um, I don't know, I mean we haven't touched on the areas very much. I mean you you've got a lot of um, apart from the Abruzzo, which is obviously a big stand for you Dave, um, you've got have you got most of the regions represented here today? We have some representative here in the stand of different regions from the Sicily, from the Rome, Roma area and further up uh, as well. Here on the brochure you can find nice presentation of uh, other regions, for example Emilia Romagna, the region I'm from, Bologna, pretty famous for food, maybe you heard of it, tagliatelle, lasagna, tortellini and so on, and other regions like Piemonte and Marche, for example. So you can take a look and 
please feel free to come and visit us and get one of these so you can have maybe an idea of some other areas of the of our beautiful country that you don't know yet you might be interesting to visit or consider on the other side of the brochure there are the listings uh, that cover quite some uh, regions of our country as well do you have Tuscany in there or not? Uh, we have a representative of Tuscany here from Siena but then there is our website you can uh, you can visit where all the listings are there yeah. does anyone have any questions about any areas? Sardinia, lovely place uh, Sardinia is represented here uh, we have a focus on this territory um, do you have an agent here? Not an agent, but you, we can put you in touch with, uh, with an agent. So Sardinia is quite huge, uh, but no problem about that. We can have a chat later on. Mixture. Sicily. Sicily, yes. there is an agency here. Yeah, physically, you can meet them. Any questions? Any other? Well, what's your favorite area of Italy? Mine? Uh, Rome, of course. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm from Rome, so it is, and I miss and I miss Italy and Rome very much because, as I say, I'm living here. Yes, question. Okay, so it's Rome, definitely Rome. Bravo. Well done. You have your passport. Born in Rome. It makes it no? it's much, much better. It's a fantastic place and they've got some new developments happening there which are quite unusual for, for the old Rome, as you probably know. Some new kind of um, serviced um, developments. Any other questions? We've got experts here. We will be, we will be basically... Uh, okay. Refurbishments. 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 Yes. yes. How do you go about tape. renovating that your rent house? Tape, red tape again. <laughs> I would say that we, we restore probably 90% uh, of the houses that we sell. And I can safely say, as far as red tape is concerned, I've restored in the UK and I've restored in Italy. Um, there is far less red tape, in my opinion, in, in Italy than there is in the UK. It's quite a simple process. The, the, uh, I've mentioned the geometry before, the kind of work they do, and they get involved in uh, creating a project to restore your property. And they know, the local geometers know what can and cannot be done in that area or in that council. And when the, when the plans are put together, they're not put together with the hope that the council accept the plans. They're put together in a way because they know that the council will accept the plans. Once they have been accepted, a stamp and, and everything else, the geometer then is totally responsible for that. So the council don't come out at certain stages to check things. Um, I'm talking now in Abrum, so again, this could change from area to area, so you do need to check that. But I, I would say that in, in the vast majority of places, the geometer controls it. So you're not worried about having to stop every month for the council to come out, check everything, make sure everything's done, because the geometer does that for you. Um, so it's um, it, it, it's quite an easy, in my opinion, it's an easy, much easier, again, more transparent uh, process. I, I think, I don't really agree, you have to be careful if you buy a property that's really historically significant, like in Puglia, Trullo, or yes. in Venice, because then the restoration is so expensive that it becomes more than the actual property. I mean, I think in the historical centres, obviously, and like in the UK as well, there's a lot of things that you can't change, and a lot of councils will have colour restrictions, um, within their historical centres. So yes, yeah, so if you are considering a historical property, do check with the local council again or a local geometer to make sure um, that you can do the kind of things you know you want to do on the outside. Usually on the inside there's no restrictions, usually. Um, but certainly colour restrictions and if you decide to put a roof terrace on, on a property in the historical centre you would need to check if that can be done or if you want to have a balcony or something similar again that doesn't in some areas be it's becoming a bit easier like in Lake Como where I was last week they're allowing people to put much more glass in the wind and lake front properties because they're realising that people want to do that with properties now I think so. they, the thing in, in Italy is, is the older properties Obviously, there's different styles of property. If a property is, is made from uh, cement, um, then you can have quite wide openings. If you're buying a stone property, we have a lot of people that say, I want a stone property with lots of features, with lots of light, very open rooms. They don't exist because stone properties, they, they, 
the openings are restricted, windows are usually smaller, usually because they're older properties to keep the heat out, to keep the heat in, um, and that sort of, so, so the light, spacious, open, some huge open windows, stone properties, very rarely exist. My geometer always said, if you want to see light, you just go outside. <laughs> when you're inside your house and it's 40 degrees every day, you do not want the sun coming in. You want a nice terrace, and that's where you spend your time. So, you know, in the UK, we don't have that uh, privilege, but in Italy, you can sit out a lot. Oh, what is it's important to remark is that um, in Italy, rules are also made to protect the environment, to protect the landscape, to protect also the historical um, image of the, the of the city, of the old towns. So uh, let's see on the uh, positive view. This uh, is also uh, something that gives you a warranty that, for example, you buy a nice apartment, a nice flat in the historical city center. It will last like that, you know, will be maybe refurbished, but they will not crash the the building in front of you in order to build a skyscraper. That's not that's not possible. So that's once you, you pick up the right area, the one you're looking for, either, for example, a countryside property or villa, if you want more, the, let's say, to enjoy the gardens, or you, want, you like to be in the very heart of the city center, just, you know, you, you step down, you walk down, and you find everything, shops or groceries and everything. Um, once you figure out that, that go ahead, and then that neighborhood will will stay like this, you know. And that's yeah, that's, that's, the that's why we love uh, Italy, yeah. don't we? Because and it doesn't change like most other places, like Spain, etc. Because you um, can't you can't yeah. automatically presume as well. Even if you have a house in the countryside, you can't automatically presume that you can extend that property because even in the countryside, they will say, you know, if if it's not building land in the area where I am. You have to have at least one hectare of land to be able to build a property. In uh, places like Tuscany, I think in the minutes around three hectares, something, because they don't want people buying pieces of land and putting 500 villas on there that all look the same and smaller in the countryside. It doesn't happen in Italy, thank God. Yeah, the, I think use the get expert advice. That's the bottom line. Definitely. And um, it's quite rare to have so many Italian agents in one place. Uh, I have to say. So do make the most of all this expert advice. So come and talk to the panel. And if you're looking, sorry to interrupt, if you're looking for a specific region and maybe there's not the agency representing that region, if you want, we are happy to um, take your details, your email. We will put you in touch. We are a federation. Um, so we are happy to put the people, both agents and customers, uh, together in contact. Then we'll see. You'll feel be happy. If you want to, to come to Italy, we'll be happy to have you and then you can take a look around. And if anybody Great. wants to know any more about the, the buying process or anything like that, then feel free to come over and we'll have a chat. Yeah, if do, a group do come and talk to the panel now. I've got to shoot off and do something else, but you can... Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Grazie.